Hey there everyone, Erevin here, bringing you another solo Deathless Helldive walkthrough that I recorded off-stream just for you guys. This time utilizing the relatively underpowered BR-14 Adjudicator for some extra challenge. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. Dropping into this data retrieval mission as a result of this choice, I knew I would have to choose my battles extremely carefully due to my primary's headshot breakpoint on Devastators beyond point blank being three hits due to the damage fall off but I definitely didn't expect it to get as challenging as it did, as you'll see soon enough. For my one and only booster, I'm taking increased limb health. This is because for the last two patches, rockets have had the ability to cause wounds, despite the known issues stating explosions cannot cause injury. As a result, when you take a rocket to the chest, you are very likely to take a chest wound. Chest wounds seemingly come along with a large burst of additional damage, resulting in a combination that can cause you to bleed out before you could even stand back up from the event. Some extra limb health can prevent this, giving me some extra safety should I make a few mistakes during the mission. For my stratagems, I'm only allowed three on this mission, so I take the 500 kg bomb to give me a method of quickly dealing with detector towers or other heavier armored buildings should they appear. The orbital laser, which has high value when dropped inside of a large base, are used to clear out a bot drop if necessary. And the quasar cannon, which is a very flexible support weapon, able to clear fabricators from the front, destroy hulks in one headshot, and perform anti-air against gunships should they appear. For my secondary, I have the senator because it looks cool and I forgot to swap to the grenade pistol for sound luring utility, and smoke grenades to help me cover objective equipment like hell bombs as well as disengage when I need to. Throughout this video, I'll be commentating over my decisions to give you a better idea of why I made them, as well as talking about some of the mistakes I made and how I could have done better. With that all out of the way, though, enjoy the video, and I'll talk to you again very soon. So we drop in pretty close to the broadcast tower here, because we know by dropping between here and Extract, there is virtually no chance I'll be immediately in range of a nearby gunship tower. This allows me to get off to a great start by destroying this broadcast tower, while also baiting a bot drop that will allow me to operate freely for a few minutes going into the next objective site. So this is another common tactic that I use. I found that by ducking behind cover and further breaking all possible line of sight to me with a smoke grenade, I very often am able to drop pursuit from any enemies giving chase from a very great distance. This is by no means bulletproof, but works often enough that I do this pretty frequently. I circle around here to take out a few guards on the guns, as although the Adjudicator is less than fantastic, it is at least relatively quiet, not drawing much attention from beyond 30 meters when firing. I then get a good line of sight on the Fabricators for this heavy base. Not wanting to waste too much time here, I deploy my second 500kg to get that cooldown rolling, and then get my orbital laser in a good position to handle the other three Fabricators before taking my leave. Not having a good way to handle all these striders at the SAM site becomes a pretty big issue with an incoming patrol also hovering nearby. I decide it's best to leave this for later as it's near extract anyway, as the bot drop is likely also off cooldown at the moment, while my fire support has all just been put on cooldown. Picking this fight would likely not end well as a result.
Instead, I decide to bait a bot drop at this SAM site so that I may push the nearby main objective without worry of reinforcements. This plays out exactly as I planned. Unfortunately, however, the main objective is also reasonably well guarded. Not wanting to risk losing a fight with heavy devastators stationed here, I opt to draw them out and away for now so that I may return later, instead heading up the hill to clear out the nearby base with my eagles coming off cooldown. It takes me a bit of time to find a good angle I can attempt to take this lone devastator down from while being behind cover, and I then proceed to miss some critical headshots that could have taken it down quickly. As the adjudicator struggles to eliminate devastators with any reasonable amount of ammunition otherwise, this nearly became an issue, but it did give me an idea of just how careful I have to be with the fights I choose to pick, as it's not difficult at all for things to go sideways running this thing. As a rule of thumb, you should never leave a cannon turret up as you never know when it might come back to bite you. For this reason, I stopped to eliminate this one with my quesadilla cannon. I was worried it might get a shot on me with this peak, so I make sure to crouch down as crouching and going prone reduces the explosive damage you receive by a great deal on average. Coming up on this main objective, I spot a gap in the guards that I can use to sneak in, so... 
That's exactly what I do. Knowing there is a reasonable chance I might have to push through the guards at the next main objective, I look to clear another nearby base with my stratagems to bait yet another bot drop. This then allows me to push the next main objective without worry of reinforcements if it becomes necessary. I have no problem dropping both my 500s here to put them on cooldown as I know they'll be back by the time I need them again, and we get the bot drop bait just as planned. Power station ends up being relatively clear, which is very convenient, although planning for it to be well guarded was still the right decision, as it also cleared another base off the map at the same time. At this point I have some options. I'm heading towards the drop off to see if I'll be able to get in unnoticed or if I'll need to bait another drop at the base nearby before pushing through the guards by hand. I'll also be able to assess what the resistance looks like on the other nearby main objective as well, allowing me to plan accordingly.
As I get close, I see it's guarded by a skeleton crew, so I head inside to drop off the first SSD with very little resistance as a result. And here is the moment the mission changes dramatically. I've just spotted out a gunship fabricator. And not just any gunship fabricator either. The double gunship fabricator. Easily the most dangerous sub-objective in Helldivers 2 at the time of recording. As these regularly spit out multiple equivalents to a flying stalker equipped with lasers and rockets. As well as alert the guards underneath them on site to a disturbance. Often triggering a bot drop as a result. This makes them functionally as bad as a detector tower as well, with the capability to call a drop any time a Helldiver enters their spawning radius of roughly 150 meters, as flying close behind those gunships will typically be an oncoming bot drop as well. The only way to destroy these is to plant a Hellbomb or launch a mini-nuke from an SEAF artillery battery nearby. So, what do we do about this? Well... The plan is to bait a bot drop from outside their spawning radius to make sure they can't call it on top of the fabricators themselves. Then, while the drop is on cooldown, I need to push through those gunships with my quasar cannon and call in the hell bomb to destroy the facility. Fabricator, south, 200 meters. Tagging map, south, 100 meters. Buck Fabricator, south, 200 meters. And here's where the mission changes dramatically again. As you may have seen it earlier, but this is the first time I notice it, there is in fact another gunship fabricator within range of this double, meaning my only option at this point is to attempt to clear these gunships off of me while pushing towards the single fabricator in hopes it sits outside of the double fabricator's range to spawn in more ships. Then, work from there.
Bob Fabricator, west, 100 meters. Deploying equipment package. Bob Fabricator, southwest, 50 meters. When you get on site with a fabricator such as this, always clear off the guards before attempting to plant the hell bomb to ensure reinforcements cannot be called to the position before you are done here. Then proceed to call down the hell bomb and throw a smoke grenade on landing. This prevents enemies from targeting it long enough for it to detonate. Hell bomb request approved on its way now. Another democratic soldier for the cause! Hellbomb more! Clear the area! Hot drop we baited earlier seems to have a bugged out light bot on board, calling in a second wave. This works to my advantage though, as it gives me some valuable time to push back at that double fabricator. Could have looked to plant this hell bomb between the towers to get both in one go, but I wanted to establish dominance over the situation while minimizing the odds I get collapsed on by an unforeseen force. I know that I just need to remove one of these fabricators to have a handle on the situation, so I play it safe and look to destroy them one at a time. I was also worried I was running short on time and didn't want to run the risk of destroying neither should the nearby guards I overlooked call in a drop like this one. This at least makes it so I can return here shortly to finish the job and have a much easier time doing so.
map. Checking my map, I see the coast is relatively clear on the second SSD objective. Seeing this as an opportunity to complete the main objective without any resistance while the heat at the gunship fabricator dies down, that's exactly what I do. This patrol starts firing on me, which is pretty strange, but I pay it no mind, make my way to the terminal, and pop a smoke in hopes it'll drop their pursuit. Which, it does. Southwest, 100 meters. Fire in the hole! I get cut off here by a patrol on my way to finish the main objective. Not wanting to draw any unnecessary attention or get an unfortunate reinforcement drop before I can finish this up, I circle around in favor of utilizing a path I've already seen as clear of any guards. With the main objective completed, my plan is to shoot these nearby guards to beta bot drop here, giving me the time I need to head up the hill and finish off that gunship fabricator.
Soft Fabricator, south, 200 meters. Fabricator, southwest, 100 meters. Dropping a pin, southwest, 200 meters. You may have noticed I sometimes leave myself with a minor injury. This is intentional as it allows me to get full stamina when I run out as needed, saving some valuable or otherwise other times critical seconds when I'm in no immediate danger as a result of doing so. Around this time, I start thinking about how I'm still missing a sub-objective somewhere. I begin clicking around on my map in one of the few areas I haven't explored yet. And sure enough, I find the SEAF artillery site that I'm missing. There is, however, a patrol nearby. I play it safe and... Just let him pass. ...before beginning to load the artillery shells.
this point, my only thought is how I can't wait to make it to extraction and get out of here with everything I just accomplished. Planning to avoid the incoming patrols while doing so and leave completely unnoticed. nearly threw it all away to a hard to see landmine. Thankfully, my innate aversion to being blown up kicks in, allowing me to swerve out of the way just in time. At this point, I might as well wait out the overtime extraction, but wanting the clear to feel as clean as possible, I move in to extract on site instead. I position myself 50 meters away from extract with options available to move away from the incoming patrols as necessary. Then, I get comfy until Pelican 1 shows up to take me home. As you may remember, as I surely didn't during this match, there was a SAM site near Extract I planned to clear before leaving. Yeah. Whoops. This ends up being a near full clear due to me forgetting all about it before packing it in. Very likely I could have taken the game into overtime and completed it before Pelican 1 arrived if I just remembered seeing it earlier. This still feels like an extremely good match with a lot of talking points to go through regardless, so I hope despite my near miss here, you feel the same. Thank you ever so much for watching this commentary through till the end, and have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time. And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. Erevin has once again brought us valuable insights into how he, in a completely not cowardly way, performs his duties in the field. For this, I am ordering all active Helldivers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to do so will result in enemy gunship fabricator spawn rates being increased by 300%! Brass tactics! Use them or die trying!